Hi everyone, Alex here. Today we're going to start our series on sprinkler hydraulics using Revit. I'm going to be focusing on a software developed by Viking. I'm going to give you a quick introduction first and I'm going to show you how to download the software and then we're going to jump into the component manager where I'm going to show you how to introduce data for a backflow preventer. And just a quick note to say that most of this content is going to be based off of NFPA 13. Hi everyone, this is Alex with Bim It Up, where we help you with professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection systems, and Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. Let's get started. The Viking Hydraulic Assistant is a piece of software developed by Viking that's going to allow you to introduce hydraulic nodes into your model, and then based on that, you're going to be able to perform hydraulic calculations to prove compliance with either NFPA 13 or factory mutual requirements. All right, so first, how do you get the tool? If you go to your browser, you can go to digitalvikingcorp.com and then there you'll see two links, one of them to download the Viking tools for Revit. This is available as a Revit plugin and also as a desktop standalone application. Uh, you can come down here to register and download here. If you're already registered, then you just type your email address here. That's what I'm going to do now. And then in my case, it tells me that I'm already registered and that an activation code has been mailed to me. So I just copy that activation code. Once it has downloaded, I can just click on the MSI. So now it's welcoming me. Next, you make sure you read the whole thing. And if you accept, you just click here and go next. I don't want to add to start menu, but I do want to create a desktop shortcut. So I'm going to click OK. OK. And then it's important to know that you have tutorials, which you can also find here under resources, tutorials. And then there you even have some videos. So anyway, this is going to be just a short overview of the tool. So here we have the hydraulic assistant and the component manager. I'm going to put them side by side. And now we're ready to explore the tools. Right, so first let's take a look at the component manager. So I'm going to double click here. And the way this is organized is you have different categories, you know, like accessories, backflow preventers, pipes, pumps, valves, etc. And then under each category, you have different category members. And then under each category member, for example, the AIMS backflow preventer, you have components. So for example, this component is the AIMS 2000 SS backflow preventer. And then for each one of those components, you can have either an equivalent length or a pressure drop curve. In this case, these sizes don't have any information, but if you jump like to two and a half, then you start looking at the information and this is the pressure drop in terms of uh, GPM. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add now the AIMS 3000 SS, and then we're gonna add the different curves for you know, three inch, four inch, and six inch or eight inch, you know, the, the ones that we use the most. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing I'm going to do is right click here under AIMS and I'm going to add a component and I'm going to call that component AIMS 3000 SS Backdoor Preventer. And here's where you can choose either to use equivalent length or to use the curve. In this case, I'm going to use the curve to keep it consistent with the 2000 SS. I'm going to go OK. Now that's my new component. Notice that the previous one the owner was V, that's Viking. And then since the owner is Viking, I cannot edit anything. So if I go here to the curve and I try to edit these values, I cannot edit any of that. But in this case, the owner is the user, which is us. And now we can go to the curve data and then we can start inputting our information. So I'm going to do probably the 3 inch, 4 inch, 6 inch and 8 inch. Let's go ahead and do the three inch first. Actually, I think I'm just gonna do the six inch and the eight inch because I have all the others that work. I just wanna show you how this works. So for that, you go to your cut sheet. There it is, that's the 3000 SS. So we go down to our graphs and then here it is, the six inch and the eight inch. So let's go ahead and take this information and just plug it in. For example, here you would have a 200 GPM, you would have three PSI of drop. At 700, you also have like three PSI. And then this here is your rated flow. So at a thousand GPM, you have probably about 4.5 PSI. And then, you know, at 1200 GPM, you have six PSI and so on. So let's go ahead and plug in those numbers. So the six inch 
we're going to add one point. I'm going to add zero. I always like to have zero there. So at zero, I have four PSI. Add another point. Now at 100, you have about 4.2 PSI. Then at 200, and you can get as granular as you want. I'm just going to have like six points maybe. So for 200, we have three PSI. And then, you know, you notice that between 200, 300, and all the way up to 700, this doesn't vary too much. It just drops a little bit. So I'm just going to go with 700, 3 PSI. So we can do 700, 3 PSI. Then 900 is 4 PSI. Then 1000 is 4.5. Then 1100 is 6. Twelve hundred is also six. Thirteen hundred is seven point five. Fourteen hundred is eight. And fifteen hundred is nine. So that's pretty decent, right? Now think about it, it makes sense. If you like this kind of content, you can subscribe to the channel. If you click that bell, you get notifications and then you don't miss any of our new videos. And if you're serious about your professional training, go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com and there you can contact me directly for some professional training. Similarly, let's do the 8 inch. So for zero is 2.8, 250 is 5, 500 is 4, 750 is 4, 1000 is 4, 1250 is 3, 1500 is 3, and then notice that 1500 is still under the rated flow, and then this other line here is the maximum that UL tested. So your sweet spot for an 8 inch backflow preventer of this type would be maybe between 1000 GPM and 2000 GPM, you know, somewhere around this vicinity because this is the rated flow, right? So you want to be in this vicinity. So let's just wrap this up. A few more points. 1754, 2004, 2550.4.5, and 2500.5. This is 2250, and this is 2500. This is five. And then that's our graph. Pretty similar, so that's good. And we're done with backflow preventers.